Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. In this video, I'm going to explain you the theory of unit or output costing. It's a topic of the subject cost accounting. So this video is going to be very, very important because after watching this video, you can easily write the theory question in examination. The problems of unit and output costing already I have uploaded in the cost accounting subject. So go to the playlist, select the subject cost accounting, select the topic problems on unit or output costing. You'll get many problems there. But in this video, I'm going to explain you only, only theory so that after watching this theory, you can be able to write in examination the theory question which may be asked like, what do you mean by unit and output costing? What is the method of unit or output costing? Then what are the features of unit and output costing? What is cost sheet statement of cost? And what is a tender and quotation for tender? All these things I'm going to explain you. So watch the video till the end, don't skip in between. So first of all, I'm going to explain you the meaning, method of unit or output costing. There are different methods of costing which are applied in different organizations like job costing, contract costing, process costing, now unit or output costing. So unit and output costing is a system of cost accounting which is applied in order to determine the cost per unit of a single product manufactured on a continuous basis. So stress on the words which I'm using here. It's a method of costing which is applied in those industries where goods are continuously manufactured. Homogeneous goods are produced. That means single product is produced. So in order to find out the cost per unit of a single product which is continuously manufactured, there we apply unit and output costing. The purpose of this unit or output costing is to find out the total cost of manufacturing of the product and also cost per unit. So normally this method of costing will be applied in case of uh, cement industry, in case of queries, in case of mines, in case of brick kiln, in case of dairy products, etc. So these are the industries where a single product will be manufactured continuously. All the units are identical. So we need to find out total cost and per unit cost. So this method of costing will be applied. What are the features of this unit or output costing? First, production consists of a single product or a few product. Remember. There are, there are no many types of products manufactured. Here only a single product is manufactured or a few, few different products, but not much. Then secondly, large number of identical products are produced. Production is continuously, continuously produced. That means goods are identical, homogeneous. The goods are not different. All the units manufactured are same. Third one, production is more or less standard quality. The quality of each product, of any product will be same. There is no differentiation in the product. All the products are of uniform quality. Next one, production is done on a continuous basis. There is no interruption of the production process. The production process is continued. Then cost, per, cost units are physical and natural. Here we need to find out what is the cost per unit. So how to find out cost per unit? Take the total cost divided by number of units. So we want the physical units. So physical units are natural here. What are the natural physical units? We calculate number of pieces. We'll find out how many tons of cement is produced. We'll find out how many units are produced. So units, physical and natural. So easily we can get. Last one, the total cost divided by number of units will give you per unit. So in this unit and output costing, if you want to calculate per unit, take the total cost divided by number of units produced. So these are some of the features of unit or output costing. Now the next topic is cost sheet or statement of cost. So cost sheet or statement of cost means a statement which lists down, which lists down the cost incurred in manufacturing the product. So the cost incurred will be a direct cost as well as indirect cost. The direct cost are direct material, direct labor, direct expenses. These are the direct cost. So any cost which is over and above direct cost are called overheads or indirect costs. So in this cost sheet, we have to clearly show 
what are the direct cost and what are the indirect cost after taking the direct and indirect cost we'll take the total cost to total cost we add the profit to get the selling price so this is the cost sheet the cost sheet will be prepared periodically like every week or every fortnight or every month like that we make the cost sheet to find out the total cost and cost per unit now i am showing the pro forma or format of the cost sheet carefully you see this is the format we have to follow when we do the problems on unit or output costing so the format is like this two columns at the end at the extreme right hand side first we take material consumed how to find out the metal consumed take the opening stock of material to this you add purchase of material if any carriage on purchases carriage means transportation charges to purchase the material if carriage on purchase is there then it will be added minus closing stock of metal so opening stock add purchase add carriage on purchase minus closing stock of metal you get material consumed this metal consumed will be taken in the order column to this direct wages direct expenses add up material consumed direct wages direct expenses you will get prime cost to prime cost we have to add overheads now overheads are classified into three categories factory overhead administration overhead selling and distribution overhead so first of all we'll take factory overhead take it in the inner column sometimes scrap scrap will be given in the problem scrap sold sale proceed from scrap is given if it is there if it is not there just don't write the sale of scrap if it is there then sale of scrap will be deducted from factory overhead to this you have to add opening stock of wip work in progress semi finished goods partly completed partly incomplete that is called wip work in progress if in the problem opening work in progress closing work in progress if it is given then we have to add opening stock of wip minus closing stock of wip remember in every problem we will not be given wip if it is there you add opening stock of wip minus closing st stock of wip to factory overhead remember this point ha huh? if it is not there don't take this directly you take factory overhead deduct scrap outer column if there are no scrap also directly you can take the factory overhead in the outer column the prime cost is the total of direct material direct wages direct expenses to prime cost you add factory overhead will get factory cost or works cost you can call it as factory cost or you can call it as works cost then add administration overhead directly you add administration overhead in the outer column you will get cost of production so again i repeat prime cost plus factory overhead is equal to factory cost to factory cost add administration overhead you will get cost of production to cost of production if stock of finished goods are given so opening stock of finished goods will be added closing stock of finished goods will be deducted to get cost of goods sold ha huh? if there is no opening stock of finished goods no closing stock of finished goods directly you can calculate after cost of production you come to uh, selling and distribution overhead but if cost of uh, finished goods are given opening stock of uh, stock of finished goods added closing stock of finished goods deducted will get cost of goods sold to cost of goods sold we add selling and distribution overhead so we will get ultimately cost of sales or total cost cost of sales or total cost then to total cost you add the profit net profit will get the final selling price final sales so briefly i'll explain you like this direct material direct wages direct expenses you will get prime cost to prime cost add factory overhead you will get works cost to works cost add administration overhead you will get cost of production to cost of production add selling and distribution overhead you will get cost of sales or total cost to total cost add the profit you will get the selling price that's it this is the cost sheet now the next stop is the treatment of certain items in preparation of cost sheet remember all the items all expenses losses will not be considered while making the cost sheet so some peculiar items are there you have to remember 
what is the treatment of these items while preparing cost sheet so what are the first one expenses not included in cost sheet so in the accounts you will find some expenses which are not to be considered while making the cost sheet those expenses will be considered in financial accounting it will not be considered in the cost sheet so what are the items interest on capital if interest on capital is there it will be taken in financial accounting but in cost accounting cost sheet not taken remember this point secondly income tax paid advance income tax paid sales tax paid provision for doubtful debts underwriting commission goodwill preliminary expense return of abnormal losses profit or loss on sale of assets debenture interest etc few examples i have given so these examples these items if you find in the problem you should give a note that these items are financial in nature it will not be taken it will not be considered while making cost sheet secondly cash discount and bad debts there is a controversy regarding the treatment of cash discount and bad debts there are two schools of thoughts are there the first school of thought says this cash discount and bad debts are financial items because cash discount will be allowed for desire for uh, for making the customers to make early payment for encouraging the customer to make early payment cash discount allowed similarly bad debts are there only it's the cost of risk taken for credit sales cost of risk taken for credit sales so that is bad debt so these two are financial items it will go to profit and loss account it should not be considered in cost sheet one school of thought says the second school of thought says that cash discount and bad debts are a part of selling and distribution over it it is not confined to financial accounting this should be taken in cost accounting also the second school school of thought says now what is our job what we should do it is better to write a note you take cash discount and bad debts in selling and distribution over it in the cost sheet you take under selling and distribution over it take the bad debts and cash discount and then write a note in the examination problem that i have treated cash discount and bad debts as a part of cost accounts so i have taken in selling and distribution over it next comes incomes not included in cost sheet some incomes are there which are not to be included in cost sheet what are the incomes interest income dividend income discount received rent received transfer fees so these are the incomes normally you will take it you will take in credit side of profit and loss account so these indirect income incomes should not be taken in cost sheet next scrap received sometimes there is a sale of scrap if the scrap of material is received if the material is sold as scrap material then that will be deducted from material consumed or sometimes it will be deducted from factory owed it factory owed it so scrap sold will be deducted from factory overheads the next comes defectives sometimes during the processing some defective items are produced now the factory has to incur some extra cost for rectification of that defective goods it's a normal course because normally some defective items are produced some cost will be incurred to rectify those defective items so defectives will be taken under factory overheads next to drawing office salaries this drawing and designing is done in factory so if drawing office salary comes it will be taken under factory overhead next comes subsidy received sometimes the government will give concession to the business to the organization so this subsidy received is an income is a concession which is received from the government so it will be deducted before fixing the selling price before fixing the selling price from selling price we deduct the subsidy and get, take the net selling price dual pricing policy sometimes the government will apply dual pricing policy to the industry in that case the um, the company has to uh, i mean has to recover whatever is the loss incurred by selling at a lower price to the government from the open market for example if we manufacture a product at rupees 10 at rupees 10 so we are selling it in the market at 12 rupees 2 rupees is the profit suppose the government wants to procure from us at 8 rupees only at 8 rupees only 
that means our cost of production is 10 rupees but the government is procuring the material at 8 rupees we are incurring a loss of 2 rupees that 2 rupees loss we will recover from the open market by increasing the selling price instead of selling at 12 rupees we sell it in the market at 14 rupees so the loss incurred by selling to the government at a lower price will be recovered by enhancing the selling price from the open market that is dual price policy the last topic is tenders and quotations see many a times a, uh, i mean a customer will give tender in the newspapers or uh, other media that we want so and so material so the suppliers will give the quotations in response to tenders for example we are having a manufacturing business furniture manufacturing business so one of the college requires some 200 benches so they have given the tender in the newspaper that we want 200 benches so we request the suppliers to supply the quotations at what price you can be able to sell us the benches of so and so specification so in the market so many suppliers are there every every supplier will prepare the quotation and submit it to the uh, issuer of tender issuer of tender the tender issuer will evaluate all the quotations whichever quotation has the lowest price to that uh, i mean supplier the order will be given by the tender issuer so cost accounting plays a very important role in making the quotation if we give a higher amount of quotation the quotation issuer the customer will reject our quotation if we give very low price in the quotation we will get the order we will get the contract but we will incur loss because we have given very low quotation the quotation should neither be low nor it should be high if it is high it will be rejected if it is low there is a possibility we may incur loss so appropriate an adequate quotation should be given so that we should get the contract and also we should get the profit so how to make the quotation this cost accounting will help a great deal in preparing the quotation the quotation prices will be calculated on the basis of past prices on the basis of past prices past rates so we take the prices of material labor or rates of the past so while making the quotation direct material direct wages direct expenses easily we can ascertain to prepare the product but the question arises for indirect expenses like overheads the overheads will be charged in quotation according to some suitable basis like per unit overhead will calculate in the past in the past how much is the cost uh, overhead cost per unit we are getting the same overhead cost per unit we apply in the quotation similarly sometimes a percentage of overhead will be calculated on some other expense on some other expense example factory overhead will be calculated as a percentage of direct wages factory overhead is calculated as a percentage of direct wages thus percentage we apply in the quotation so overheads can be applied on different basis to give the quotation that's all so this is the end of the topic end of the topic uh, unit or output costing or single costing so after watching this video definitely you can be able to write a theory question in examination so if you are satisfied with my lecture give a like to the video share it in your group in your friend circle so that more students can watch these videos give your comments on these lectures and lastly don't forget to subscribe my channel